can tell you a secret. There's a place on the internet. Most of the big names that you know of, they are all there and they are all communicating there. You can all interact and you see also the interactions between all these amazing researchers. It's like a secret place for only the best of the best. And this is also where I learn a lot. And today I'm telling you how you can find this place and how you can navigate around what interesting things you can find there. And I give you the permission to join. You can sign up yourself and then curate the list of researchers that you're interested in. But shh, don't tell anybody. Let's open Twitter. Discussion about responsible disclosure. I've been there, but might be interesting to you. This is a pretty fun uh, Twitter account uh, by a friend of mine. The bot is constantly scraping uh, paste bins. I mean, there are tons of tools and people that are doing it. This just happened to be a friend of mine. And so uh, you can see here links to paste bins that contain some credentials. Oh, nice. A YouTube channel of another YouTuber advertised here. It's uh, by Strop Eagle. Uh, it's, it's a channel about malware reverse engineering. Check it out. If you always wanted to see our decompiler in action but were afraid to ask, you can play with it now. We offer a demo decompiler for x64. Wait, this is new? The demo version of IDA now comes with a x64 decompiler? Let's check this out. Okay, so I've already requested uh, the evaluation version and it does say here the demo version of IDA comes with x64 decompiler. So here it is. IDA64, let's execute that. By the way, there's a demo for Windows, Linux, and Mac, so that's pretty neat. Just a small test binary, it's from, from a format string exploitation challenge. So let's check out the decompiler. F5. The decompilation functionality is provided by a decompiler plugin. This plugin is not part of IDA, it's a separate product. The decompiler has limited functionality. The decompiler is working. Holy crap. It works. That's nice. It's a, it's a standard decompiler. I mean, it's just 64-bit binaries, but this is already really, really helpful for CTFs because I guess like the most standard like pwnable binaries nowadays are 64-bit. I mean, we know the reason why IDA is doing this. IDA didn't share a demo for 64-bit for a long time, and now a decompiler tool, I think they are really feeling the pressure that Ghidra is putting on them. Just a quick reminder, Ghidra is completely free and also has a pretty good decompiler. While IDA is still probably stronger in, in, in all places, the fact that it's free and pretty mature, it's definitely usable, it's, it's really usable. It's a tough competitor for IDA, especially long term. If now all the kits are coming up on Ghidra, all the tools that will be developed in the next five to 10 years uh, for Ghidra, if, if Ghidra remains maintained and, uh, and, and a community is forming around this, uh, Ghidra has the potential to surpass IDA. It, it's great to see competition uh, in, in this market because uh, now you also get an IDA demo version with, with the compiler. That's pretty cool. It's another day now and I realized I wasn't properly dressed for the Hacker Underground forum that we are exploring. So let's head in again. Looks like the discussion today about uh, responsible disclosure is continuing a little bit. Here's a dark cat is weighing in and malware tech. My gosh, this blew up. Rip's also trying some marketing here. Can you spot the vulnerability? Let's have a quick look at this. Okay, if the password is set, if you have a post request with a password, then it will set the cookie to the MD5 hash of that password. Oh, and we have a password here hard coded and I immediately noticed the zero E followed by only numbers. This is a classic uh, PHP issue. This part here now checks the cookies. So if you don't have a cookie set yet, then it shows you the login prompt. But if the MD5 hash generated from your cookie input is equal to the password, then the login, look, then the login succeeds. It's a very typical PHP challenge issue kind of thing that you should be aware of. I believe I've also shown this in a video before. Live overflow here editing this video. I just realized I completely forgot to explain what exactly the issue is. But I also dug up the video where I'm explaining this. It was in this other PHP challenge. So let me just play it really quick. PHP has type juggling, which means that a variable's type is determined by the context in which the variable is used. And so, for example, these two different strings evaluate to true. 
because based on the context they are automatically converted to numbers. And so those are both zero. And what can happen now is that if for some reason two different hash strings start with zero e followed by only numbers, they would evaluate to true. This is a very typical CTF PHP challenge. So I thought maybe we have here a similar issue because equal equal in PHP means equal after type juggling while equal 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 means identical and the type has to match too. There we go, educational YouTube channel. But I also forgot to mention that obviously people were responding to that tweet with the solutions. So that's again another example of what you can learn if you are just browsing Twitter and coming across something like this. If you didn't know about PHP type juggling, you would have found the explanation and the solution in the responses. I guess just some weird, interesting fun facts. 95% ATM swipes run COBOL code and 80% of transactions run on mainframe and there are I don't know, can this number be right? 220 billion lines of code only in COBOL? Well, that sounds crazy, but I'm sure a lot of the financial stuff is running on mainframes and COBOL. That's like IBM stuff. I guess something like this is also always interesting and fascinating. It's about Paolo, the man who bought Hacking Team, and it's here new marketing material of the company that is building surveillance tools and sells this product and service to agencies around the world. Stuff like this might always feel weird, but that's just reality, okay? So this kind of stuff exists. It would be naive to believe that there wouldn't be implants that you don't know about for various operating systems. And probably they have exploits or other means of delivery for all of them too. Yeah, the, the real world sucks, I guess. So in IT, you either know something or you don't. And everything you know seems trivial and easy and you feel like everybody else should know it. So here, for example, is somebody who I guess has never heard of Knuckle or Pinnacle before. And I guess this person is surprised that there is a feature to run C and C++ code in browsers in some kind of sandbox. That might sound weird, but yeah, stuff like this exists. There was also a CTF challenge at, from the Google CTF uh, related to Pinnacle. So maybe check that out. So this tweet is a good example why sharing something you found out can be useful. Other people might have also not heard about this before and now you learn it. Oh, I also remember that Hexwaxwing is working on a curated list of researchers or hackers to follow on Twitter and she's categorizing them in all the different categories they are like kind of tweeting about or the area they are working in. It's unfortunately currently not available but there's a talk about it uh, by her that you can find on YouTube. And you can see it being split up in all the different categories. I, I talked to her, unfortunately the project right now is offline, but she's still working on it and she's very busy right now. But keep an eye out on her Twitter. She's hoping to release it in a couple of months maybe. So if you see this video long time in the future, maybe search for 1337 list uh, or check out her Twitter. And if you see this video earlier and you can't find it, then just follow her on Twitter. I'm sure she will tweet about it once she got it to a state to publish it. I mean, there's a lot of crap on Twitter too. There are memes, there are jokes. People talk about other stuff and private stuff. People talk about politics. I just want to say it all has a place there. It's a social place with humans and I enjoy these social interactions as well. So please don't be one of those dicks that goes on there and then complains about people. Uh, I only followed you for technical stuff. Stop talking politics or shit like this. Like, stop it, okay? If you don't care, unfollow silently. You don't need to be a dick about it. I think it's nice that people have a platform here to just share and talk with each other. Stuff that is also unrelated uh, to, to IT security. If you are wondering how to start, um, I guess I would recommend just look at the people I follow. Not all of them are just about IT security, but most of them are. It might be a good place if you have zero people you follow. And then over time you build and curate your own list. You just keep reading uh, Twitter, you look at replies and maybe you find interesting people that have uh, good responses and then you follow them. And then over time you slowly build up a nice Twitter following with a lot of relevant information that, that you care about. So like I said, please keep this hacking forum secret. Shh. But I believe it's one of the best places to interact and stay up to date with IT security.